So this is the story spanning over close to nine months since we first started to build on our homestead. This is meant to give a little bit of inspiration and hope, but also definite for huge advice of what not to do whenever you are building on raw land and starting from scratch. And if you get impatient like I did and take the cheap route, this is what not to do. So whenever we first started to build on our property, we had to clear a space for our homestead because it was just it was just completely wooded. There is a thing that you could do which is called a forestry mulcher. I wish that I would have done that, but I didn't because it's a lot more expensive. So I took the cheap and fast route, which is not really cheap in the long run, and I hired someone with a bulldozer to come and clear all of our space. You see, this contractor that I hired, he did not have what we all here in this community would want, is a, an organic, a permaculture type of mindset. He was just a old school country and, hey, let's just bulldoze everything. If a tree dies, it dies. Because that's the main thing about this video is he killed my tree. Now it is spring here in Texas and life is greening everywhere. And this is a video that I shot back in the summer and I just never posted it for you guys. So it was very emotional and I was bummed and I was sad, but this just shows you what this guy did to my tree. We have already moved from suburbia to the homestead. We're actually clearing land right now. I'm usually super happy <laughs> and uh, upbeat. Today this stinks and I hope that I'm just being over dramatic but as I'm looking at everything else on our property the signs are pointing to where us and the land clearing that we hired out to do has killed our big beautiful oak tree. As you can see, uh, and you can, I'll show you the video up here of us getting our land clear. We were really, really excited about having all of this space, this cleared space that our kids can run around uh, and they're loving it. They really are. It's really great. And it has done 100% of what we wanted it to do. Now there was something that we had no clue was even possible is we we thought that there was this cool big tree back here and we wanted to save it we wanted to uh, have it be cleared out i'm not even talking about any specific person because this nobody wants to kill a big beautiful tree like this they might have just not paid attention i don't know but something happened and um, this tree is not doing good so what you see here is they went really really deep in here there's a root right there sucks <laughs> um, they just they cut out the dirt under here to try to get all the other trees of course I did not tell them oh I want you to kill this tree so try to kill it but I didn't know to say hey we want this tree we are really excited about this tree just clear around the drip line of it even if we would have said just clear just under the drip line and I will come in and I will clear out all of the stuff. I'll do it by hand so that I can make sure that it's uh, done well and protected, that the root system is not compromised. I didn't know to say that. <laughs> so that's really the gist of today's video is if you're clearing land and there are trees that you want to keep forever because they're awesome and beautiful and you need them. You gotta micromanage just a little bit and you gotta tell them what to do and I'm learning that and I'm screwing up big time. The tree is losing leaves uh, way faster than any other tree that I'm looking at. Um, the tree's leaves are getting brown and spotted. It, it, it does look stressed. So either it was already stressed or 
and, and this just was the nail in the coffin or it completely stressed out because of the clearing. And I feel really serious about this. I do understand that I'm kind of being dramatic on this, but um, I'm just going to say it because it this has been bugging me for like the last 24 hours of me being out here by myself worrying about this tree. Uh, this tree was supposed to be our amazing climbing tree for our kids. Of course, it is right here in front of our house. Like it's right here in front of where our house is going to be. And so I texted um, our permaculture designer who unfortunately I did not hire to do this because he doesn't have the machines and it was stupid. It cost, it would cost like twice as much. And so I, I'm now learning that, um, any work that I need to get done here, I'm having Pete to be here. Uh, I'll just pay him for the consulting fee and just have him here and to direct what people are doing because uh, this tree is, you know, this tree is probably like 30, 40, I don't know, 50 years old. It's, it's a ginormous, huge, beautiful tree and uh, you can't get it back. It's not dead yet, I don't think. So I would love to get rid of all that worry and give it to you and uh, I would ask that you pray. Just a quick little prayer that God would save this tree. We just waited and we prayed. There was one, uh, the Andrew Couch, they, uh, his family, they who came and stayed here and I told them the story of this tree. His daughter prayed for this tree. He said, Bo, if your tree dies, I think that my daughter's faith in the Lord is completely in jeopardy because of how much she has prayed for this tree. And guys, let me show you this. This is what has just happened over the last couple of weeks. Here is my tree. Look at this. <laughs> oh my goodness, new leaves, new growth. Let me show you this new growth here. Oh, it is alive, it is reborn. This is amazing. Holy moly. Oh, I just am so thankful. And in this season of Easter, this is not Easter, but in this season of Easter, this tree has gotten new life. And I just wanna say thank you, God. Oh, this is awesome. You guys, this is so great just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. And so now it's time to take care of it. And I am giving it a new layer of mulch, a fresh, amazing organic mulch, probably from other oak trees and cedar trees that is native here to be able to cover it up so we're going to keep it alive for hopefully generations for our kids to be able to have this tree and be able to spend time in it and to climb it and to swing from it and to build tree houses in it. This life it's worth it, guys.